What do you want people to remember about that? What do I want people to remember? Um, their sacrifice, their sense of duty, uh, and the love they had for their families and those they served. That, that's so important. You know, uh, it's, it's a, not a job that we do for pay. It's not a job we do to be in front of a camera or anything like that. It's a job that's done because of the love we have for each other, that camaraderie, right? And then the love we have for serving others blindly, right? Like I'm not sitting there looking at someone's house going, hmm, what kind of truck do they drive? Do I like that truck? Do I want to help them today? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, do they, do they share the same values as me or what, you know, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. They served everyone right and the men and women who are out there today they serve everyone they make that choice to serve everyone and so that's what i want people to know as far as my brothers that though they were firefighters and that's how they passed that that's not the only identity they had you know they were loved ones they were dads so many other things first do you get to keep up with any of the families yeah 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 Good. quite a few yeah and some I watch on social media and, you know, just keep up the loop. And, yeah, it's really, it's good to see their healing, you know. And um, you can't forget, but, you know, a lot of the families have been able to kind of process this in their own way, continue to struggle in, in others. But, yeah, it's, it, it's helpful for me to see. You know, I think um, it's a lot, though, you know. It's like you think of 19, right? But then you think of like the the media family. You know, there's hundreds, mm -hmm. right? Hundreds of people mm -hmm. just in their immediate family. So there's, yeah. you know, a lot of good going on though. Yeah. A lot of powerful healing, especially from the young children. Like some of them are coming to age where it's very impressive, like the things that they're doing and how they're leading and how they're sharing what they've experienced. Do your I, kids understand what happened? Uh, yeah, my 12-year-old does now, yeah. She's old enough to... Yeah, my 10-year-old, she's autistic, so she she, she wouldn't understand. Uh, then my son, he's three and a half, so like, I don't need to explain yeah. that to him. <laughs> you know, like... like truck. That's all I need to know, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like, because he, he just needs to be a kid. Yeah, for sure. Like, he doesn't need to wear my stuff. Yeah. Like, wear my trauma, wear my... It's not his job, yeah. you know. Neither is my daughter's, my wife's, or anybody else's. And so I think that's that's been the biggest piece of this 10-year anniversary for me is, like, looking at the children uh, that are growing up and just the impressive lives that they're living and just trying to just... just support them from far in that and you know be excited for what is going to come for them and how they're going to lead you know it's it's so sad what they've had to experience but they've turned it around you know and they've turned that into something that they can share with others at a young age and it's really impactful like truly impactful is there anything else that you want to add about Anything that we talked about or anything that you think is missed or any message that you want to get out there? There's you, so much. You, you've worked through so much. I mean, it's like truly impressive. Thank you. I mean, that's, it's a lot and yeah, I'm still only 31. I mean, it's still like, you're so evolved and so inquisitive and you can tell that you've done so much work so yeah it's uh, it's been a journey and you know um, the fire service you, you know you remain teachable and so I've just tried to keep that through my entire life that's what keeps us alive that's what keeps us moving forward and so like closing thoughts closing remarks you know just gratitude yeah. uh, for so many community members so many in the state 
you know, that have supported the families, myself, that support first responders. Um, like, I can't repay that, you know, outside of just trying to be a light for somebody else. And so I'm just forever thankful and grateful for that. Uh, you know, secondly, just this mental health topic that has affected and impacted so many others that just encouragement that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to get help and that you're loved. And you know, there's, there's freedom in getting help. And it's tough and it's challenging, but it's worth it, you know? And if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't share it. You know, these smiles aren't fake. They used to be. You know, they used to be really timed and I should smile here because then they'll think I'm okay. But this is me, you know, and I never thought this would be possible. And it wasn't just myself that that happened through. That was through my faith in Christ. That was through the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. It was through a trauma therapist. It was through fellowship. It was through community, you know, that loved and supported me, the fire service. Veterans, please, EMS, like just through, through so much love. And so I just hope that someone else gets to experience uh, that too and that, that it is out there for them in a different manner. Um, yeah, that you're loved. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Certainly. Appreciate it. Is there anything else you would want to share about your facility that you want people to know? Or? Oh, you know what? There's the. Um, the Tribute Center. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Let's yeah. Uh, yeah, the Grand Mountain Hotshot Tribute Center that's located at the Prescott Mall. They've done such an amazing job of capturing just my brother's life and, and shedding wisdom. And there's family members that are involved in that. You know, there's so many volunteers, uh, but they need support you know, to be able to continue that going. And they have such an amazing heart, but you know, for someone that may be a grant writer, have time or have an opportunity to be able to help them expand and, and continue that because it's, it's not only just my brothers they are wanting to honor, it's the, the wildland service as a whole and education. And so there's such an amazing opportunity to be a part of something that I think could make a tremendous impact, not just in Prescott, but in the entire state of Arizona for, you know, kids to be able to take a field trip to, to a facility like that to learn about something that impacts us every day, you know, um, our first responders, wildfires, all, all summer long, right? Longer and longer. And to, to build an education around that would, would be phenomenal to, for people to be able to support that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think too, when we, when we talk about this tragedy, it's, you know, some people forget that it's, it goes 9-11 loss of life for firefighters and you're now. Yeah. I mean, and I, you know, when I was researching all of this, it's like it, we all lived it, but mm -hmm. you're still pulling up things, and there's people searching. Was this a real? Was this a true story? Because you know, like we talk about, eighteen-year-olds coming in here. Yeah. Well, they were eight at the time. You know, yeah. it's already maybe too far back for them to remember mm -hmm. when, when they're only eighteen. So. Yeah keeping the conversation going and reminding people. It's a conversation of like safety. It's a conversation of honoring. It's a conversation of legacy. It's a conversation of moral character. It's, it's so big, right? And history teaches us so much. And so how do we learn from that? And that's by keeping their memory alive. And I think the Tribute Center does an amazing job of doing that. You know, the memorial service really did a beautiful job with mm -hmm. talking about morals and that yeah. was wow yeah it's it's an unfortunate truth of this career that you choose and so um, we don't accept it but it's it happens right this loss of life and service of others and so you begin to understand the toll it takes and what message do you truly want to carry in a short amount of time? What is the impact that you want to leave on people? Yeah. You know, um, that's love, to take care of yourself, to be better, to help the next person, right? 
we have we only have so many words we could share and give and so unfortunately through history we've learned that when we have those moments we have to be impactful to be impeccable with our word to be very precise with how we share things so that it makes an impact it's just not falling on dead ears that someone can sit there and say I can relate to that that's my job is to turn what I've gone through relatable for someone else they can't relate to losing 19 people they can relate to depression anxiety trauma right substance abuse they can relate to that so it's like making it relatable for someone that feels all alone I felt that yeah yeah and I don't you don't want anyone to ever feel alone you know and that's a that's a horrible feeling and so by you know sharing this hopefully someone could say hey I'm not alone you know we're all unique in a way but we all suffer very similar you're there you got it <laughs> for sure getting there yeah lifetime it's okay yeah thank you thank you <laughs> making us all tear up and <laughs> gosh you're there almost yeah we'll never get there yeah. till we're there yeah exactly until we're really there yeah until we're really there yeah we go, oh wow do you have what do you see for yourself in the next 10 years yeah uh, what do I see in the next 10 years um Putting a daughter in college, yeah. Uh, continuing to perfect and grow when necessary and appropriate hold fast recovery mm -hmm. to expand the services, uh, to remain teachable in that, um, to make smart decisions and above all, like follow God's will for me and surrender to that. And the rest I'm open to. Yeah, whatever it is, it's fine. That's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know, Big dream, big picture. You know, I'd love to see multiple facilities across the country, right? Uh, um, but I love so deeply what I get to do here in an intimate level that I don't know if that's what we'll do. I don't know. It's not up to me. Yeah. Because this is the only location? Yeah. yeah. For now, yeah. yeah. So, um, it's what drives me, you know? It keeps me motivated for sure. And so I look back and, you know, what's next for the 10 years? I want to make sure my kids know that I'm a good father. That's important. Um, not by telling them, but by them feeling it. Good husband, you know, person in my community, right? People that look back and say, hey, I'm proud of him. I don't agree with all his choices, decisions, but I think he's done a good job. I'll accept that for sure. And so uh, that's the goal. You know, work work till the end. You know, pursue that, give back. Whatever capacity it is, that'll be enough. So, yeah, next 10 years. Wow, 41. <laughs> that's well, when it gets crazy. When you start to go 41, 51, 61, my gosh, you know. Yeah. I think... Uh, I think one thing I will say is I've just begun, mm -hmm. like, with, with humility, like, this is just a start, yeah. <laughs>